South African students are struggling in mathematics compared to other countries. Now, this is according to the International Mathematics and Science Study to share expert analysis on why our learners struggle with maths. Professor Bram Fleisch from the Witt School of Education joins us now live. A very good afternoon to you, Professor, and thank you so much for your time. So why exactly do South African students at all levels, be it tertiary and even uh, secondary, struggle with mathematics? Where do we get it wrong? So I think it's important to place this in context. It's not that we're just struggling in maths. We're having difficulties across the board. And I think we need to recognize that the problem stems from real struggles that young children have in the first three years of schooling. We know that children are not learning to read in their home language. And I think we're having equally challenging problems in the first three years with children acquiring the basics of mathematics in the foundation phase. There's been many a call, and I'm glad you bring that, um, that, that, that situation of, of home language up. There's been many a call from all quarters in, in this country for, for kids to learn in their home language from those foundation phases. Do you think that that would then improve you know, our, our learning or our, our capabilities where maths and science is concerned if students were allowed to be taught in their home language? No, I think it's, it's certainly a, a very important component of it, but we need to recognize that children are currently being taught in their home language in the majority of schools in grades one, two, and three. And even when they're taught in their home language, children are struggling to acquire the basics of literacy and mathematics in their home language. So it's not sufficient just to concentrate on the language. We also need to think very carefully about how we're teaching mathematics in those early grades. Is there perhaps a need to put some focus on educators themselves, you know, in, is somewhat empowering and, and, and allowing that our, our teachers get a, a little more empowered and a little more knowledgeable uh, to be teaching these kinds of subjects. Could that be another problem we have? Certainly, I think we need to be thinking carefully about how we provide ongoing support to our teachers, but also about the quality of materials we give. And obviously, the curriculum is a key component. So are we over, um, overcrowding the curriculum? Are we expecting too many different components in the foundation phase and across the entire curriculum? So there are many dimensions to this. I think it's important, though, that we concentrate on getting the foundations phase right. The foundations are essentially the building blocks for children to acquire the more sophisticated elements of mathematics. And if they don't, if they're not confident in those skills and the knowledge associated with early grade maths, it's very difficult to build up their knowledge in the later grades. Maths and science, uh, Professor, in private schools is something that is a little more stronger. And obviously one would say it's because they have far more resources than you know, public education. But how, how are they managing to, to get it right, at, at, at least better than public education? So again, I think we recognize that many of the children who are going into our best uh, independent schools have a quite excellent grounding in both in, in all areas of schooling and it's obviously much easier for a teacher who is teaching a child that has the basics that where their knowledge essentially is mapped against the curriculum to teach effectively uh, and on the other hand for many of our teachers in public schools particularly Kunta one through three schools township schools rural schools when children get to secondary schools, when they're not really reading or doing maths at the grade eight level, really their math skills is at a grade two or grade three level, it's very difficult to both catch up and keep up with the curriculum concurrently. So I think, I think we really do need to have a very single-minded focus on making sure that children get the requisite um, uh, learning going in those early grades because it's very difficult, no matter what you do, to catch up if children are substantially behind before they've even entered the high school situation. How far behind other countries are we, Professor? Again, I don't think it's particularly helpful to benchmark us against Finland or Singapore. Yeah. I think we need to recognize that we are um, having challenges, but we're also um, a system that is improving. So just to kind of constantly reference ourselves against the international benchmarks is not helpful. It is important to recognize that we do have a serious challenge that we need to confront, but that we are moving and that there are very many initiatives, both in, um, in provincial departments at national level, as well as within the NGO and the funding sectors that are beginning to understand the scope and the, the dimensions of the crisis and are beginning to help the problem as we move forward.
Professor, thank you so much for your time here on All Angles. That is Professor Bram Flesch from the Witz School of Education.